Hello and welcome back to Master Jory, who is married now. Married with a son. We have advanced and we have just agreed to join a melee of where all the greatest fighters who have just come back from fighting the Ironborn will uh, take part and prove their, uh, well, prove how strong they are. So, let's see how it goes. Hopefully it's going to go fine. There we go, the Iron Throne's coming back together. Reason it's doing this is because the Mega War system splits everyone up for the war, and now it is over. So, uh, we can split it up like that again. It's usually a little bit easier unless we're actually trying to do things at the higher level. The Castle Sirwin Melee of 8290. The early stages of the melee were chaotic and frenzied, and has left fields trampled and villages half torn down. Many have been forced to leave the battle, either by injury or defeat, many at your hand. Now you stand among the remaining warriors to begin the final melee. So this is uh, Lord Megar of Castle uh, Sirwin's thing here. Oh, he's uh, an intrigue focus. You can almost see it like uh, he holds the turret, he holds the uh, melee in order to get rid of somebody who knows is a weak fighter and he's like, you know, we just stab him with a poison blade or something. Anyway, hopefully that's not us. Let's charge. You and John all sight each other amongst the battle and prepare to engage in combat. So this is my master of arms, my sworn shield, is the first person I've come across. I will defeat him. Okay. Let's have a look here. He has got 40, he's a trained fighter, but we are skilled fighter. We are a little stressed, but it's going to be close, but we should have the edge. You and John will slowly circle each other, tense and focused. You scan him for any sign of weakness, any opening in his defense you could possibly exploit. Let's see what we want to do. What do we want to do to him here? Well, I don't know. Um, let's attach, attack with force. He's no match for my might. Your experience in combat and prowess with your weapon allows you to spot an opening in Jono's defense. It's not much, but it's all you need. And we'll strike. You easily break through Jono's guard and knock him to the ground. He lies sprawled at your feet, completely at your mercy. It's all over now. Jono drops his weapon and throws up his hands. Yield. I yield. Uh, we're obviously not going to kill him. That seems like a really bad idea. I accept. Back on your feet. The fight is over, John all lies defeated, you have won. Victory is mine. After a fierce duel, you are forced John all to concede defeat. He removes himself from the field, nursing his injuries, while you seek a new opponent. He knew the risks. You and Barth Bowl sight each other amongst the battle and prepare to engage in combat. So Barth Bowl is the brother of Lord Porther of King's Grove. Okay, Lord Porther um, being within the Wolfswood. Okay. Well, obviously, I'm going to defeat him. Uh, my ability to take down any man in the brawl is widely renowned. Many speak of my prowess and how it'd be unwise to pick a fight with me. Well, it's good to be recognized. Good, people are starting to talk. So, how good is he? He's the spy master. He's not an amazing fighter, but, you know, we should be able to beat him. We're circling each other again, tense and focused. I'm going to go with might again. We see a weak spot, a vulnerability in his defense. It's not much, but it's all I need. Strike. You easily break through Barth's guard and knock him to the ground. He lies sprawled at your feet, completely at your mercy. All right. Um, and we strike again, but Barth rolls to the side. Wounded, but very uh, still very much alive. He rises to his feet and readies his weapon once more. Okay. Well, let's uh, wait for him to attack this time. We'll uh, go one mistake all he needs. We'll attack with speed. Your experience in combat and prowess with your weapon allows you to spot an opening in Barth's defense. It's not much, but it's all you need. I quickly avoided his forceful attacks. We broke through his guard, knocked him to the ground, and... He drops his weapons and holds up his hands. I yield! I yield! Alright. Well, back in your feet. Fight is over. Barth lies defeated. We have won again. We have forced him to concede defeat. Violence seems to solve all your problems. Life is easier when you can simply smash things into submission. I no longer seem to have the patience to negotiate. We become wroth. Okay. So we, uh, people fear us a little bit. And we're a little bit angry. Okay, we're not very good at intrigue and diplomacy though. And we're not very good at hatching dragons. Not that that was something I think we were ever planning on doing. Or at least not right now. Anyway. You and Howland's uh, bowl sight each other amongst... 
uh, amongst the battle. Okay, so Howland is the brother of Barth. Does it? We defeat the spy master, and now we're, his brother came along. He's the commander, and he's a, a justicier. Anyway, let's have a look here. He's a better fighter than us. Okay, okay. Well, I will defeat him. You and Howland slow, slowly circle each other, tense and focused. You scan him for any sign of weakness, any opening his defense you could possibly exploit. Okay, well, let's take a defensive stance. We, we think he's going to uh, be better than us, let's, let's be defensive. We saw a weak spot, a vulnerability in his defense, it's not much but it's all we need. Okay, we knocked him to the ground. Yield! I yield! Oh, we've defeated him again! Oh, we defeated his brother, we've now defeated both of the brothers, fantastic! Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set these two as a special in a special interest because we have now, uh, you know, we've interacted with them and I want to keep a track of them. Now that's one thing I want to do with this series. I want to keep track of people. I don't want to lose them. I want to get rivalries. I want to get friendships. I want to get things that last over uh, generations. So we'll see what we can do. Victory is mine. We have forced them to concede defeat. After many hours of intense battle, you alone are left standing. You have beaten all who stood before you, and you are declared the winner of the melee. Glory to me. We get a little bit of money, and we get more prestige. After a long time of training both day and night, you have finally mastered the art of combat. Few could contend with your extensive knowledge of battle technique. You know what? I think people will know me as a duelist. That seems good. Yeah. We'll beat anyone one-on-one. -on -one. After many hours of intense battle, Lord Mager's melee is finally over. The final group uh, provided a fine spectacle for all those present, and many approved of the good fight you provided. What a great fight. Yeah, that was good. That was fun. We won the first melee. We've shown that we are definitely, you know, we're, we are somebody to contend with. And we are very, very good at martial. Like, we're good at battle, we're good at combat. It's good. My lord, news from Sunspear of a trial by combat. Lord Franklin Fowler demanded trial by combat from his captor, Prince Doran Martell, and proved his innocence by slaying his opponent, Garscon of the Greenblood. Okay. So Gascon of the Greenblood is uh, dead. He was just a squire. Okay. And yeah, the knight took him down. Oh, the, he was, the knight is very good. The Fowler is very good at fighting. I don't imagine squire is that good at it. Okay. Well, yeah, not sure whether we can trust that one. My lord, news from King's Landing of a trial by combat. Lord Paramount Balin Greyjoy demanded trial by combat from his captor, L King Robert Baratheon, selecting Victorian Greyjoy as his champion. Victorian forced his opponent, suppressing Greenfield, to yield, proving Lord Paramount Balin's innocence. Oh wow! Okay, so Victorian, with his amazing fighting ability. Managed to take it down one of the King's Guard. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. That's very interesting. So Balin is not imprisoned. Nothing's really happened to him. Okay. Wow. Alright then. How is our liege doing? I just want to take a look at him here. See whether there's anything we want to uh, be noting. Uh, it seems fine. His children are still doing alright. Vassal wise. Anybody dislike him? We have a few dislike, and we have Torn Little, and we have uh, You While Not. Why do they dislike him? Air educated with foreign culture. Oh, okay. Uh, and he was fired from the council. Air educated with foreign culture. Who's he being educated by? He's being educated by Sir Rickard Silverax, who's a Stormlander who's also dishonorable. But he is a knight. Interesting. All right then, we'll let that go, let time move on. At age 37, um, my mother Hildegard has died of poor health. So yeah, our family continues to grow smaller. You know who, who else I should set a special interest? I should probably set my uncle a special interest, just so I know what's going on with Sir Roderick. Right. Oh. Eddard Stark attempted to imprison Howland Reed and succeeded, so he's, uh, Howland Reed of the Neck is now imprisoned. Okay, he's a mystic of some kind. But he is a formidable fighter. My lord, news from all realm provinces of a trial by combat. Lord Yon 
Royce, or Iron, Iron Yoice, demanded trial by combat from his captain, Lord Paramount John Aaron, and proved his innocence by slaying his opponent, Lord Paramount John Aaron. John Aaron is dead. The Royce has killed him. So who now controls uh, the Eyrie? Um, or the Kingdom of the Vale? It's now uh, Lady Paramount Meredith of the Wainwood. Okay, interesting. Yeah. And she is married normally to Lord Cadwell of the Paps. Okay. So it's going to be the uh, Elishams who are going to be in control of the Vale. That's an interesting one. Definitely a, a twist. Okay. Fate smiles upon me. My wife, Daisy, is pregnant once more. Fantastic. Okay. I just want to have a look at what's going on down here. Uh, oh, nothing's going on. It's just that we're now underneath the top level. Although the Trident and the Westland still aren't back underneath. So I'm wondering whether they are at war with each other. They are. They're uh, in a war for Lord Paramount Tywin Slim on Canet. Okay, so can it be this one up here? All right, that's why they're still in a war. Fine, I'll split that back up. Through staged war games and large-scale exercises, I feel confident I can master one of the main military disciplines. So we can go light foot, heavy foot, or mounted warriors. You know what? Light foot for us. Yeah, I see. That seems about right. My lord. News from Winterfell of a trial by combat. Master Kadaros Molin demanded a trial by combat from his captor, Lord Paramount Eddard Stark, selecting Rob of Horfost Hill as his champion. Rob was slayed by his opponent, Lord Jorah Mormont, uh, providing uh, Master Kadaros' uh, sorry, proving Master Kadaros' guilt. As a consequence, Master Kadaros was beheaded on the orders of Lord Paramount Eddard of the North. So, Rob of Horst of Horfrost Hill is dead. That is the end of his line. Joro being the one who did it. We then have... Um, who else died? So Master Kadaros died. He did have cancer as well, so probably not going to survive very long, but he has been beheaded. And now his brother holds the, the Don Forest. Okay. Interesting. Right. That was, that was a good one. Another trial by combat. They're just non-stop. Um, Lord Howland Reed demanded trial by combat from his captor, Lord Paramount Eddard Stark, selecting Ardeal Quig as his champion. Ardeal forced his opponent Holland to yield, and proving Lord Howland's innocence. The so Holland being just a sworn shield of the North. Okay. Ardeal uh, Quig, or Quag, or however. Yeah, should have been a better fighter, in theory. So, yeah, it makes sense. Okay, thank you. I like it telling us about the Trials of Combat. I was considering whether I wanted to turn that off, but no, I, I quite like knowing what's going on in the realm. My acquaintance, Lord Roos uh, Bolton, has tried to have Lord Ramsay Snow of Ethering arrested, but failed to apprehend him. Lord Ramsay has now raised his banners in uh, rebellion. The realm will surely bleed. Okay, so do we want to back uh, Ramsay Snow? Interesting. So we could, in theory, offer to join his war. No, we couldn't, because we're not directly underneath them, I guess. Okay, that's fine. Wait, did it not say he's raised his flags in rebel? Yeah, yeah, okay, it did. So he's defending against his son, effectively. Oh, no, I wasn't looking at liege, I was looking at um, air. Okay. So that's uh, about 1,000 troops versus 5,000 troops. Oh, wow. Looks like Ramsey is not going to survive very long. What's our important decision? We could hold the melee. Um, yeah, sure, we'll hold the melee. That seems all right. We have decided to hold the melee in the northern tradition with warriors from all over King's course assembling to take part. No doubt many among their number will be sorely maimed before the day is done. Hopefully we get to join in. The warriors of King's Course who have put their name forward for the melee have arrived in King's Course. A great feast shall be held, and then all shall enter the fighting fields upon the morrow to begin the battle. I just want to have a look at that. That did not look like that went very well for him at all. Uh, no. Roos looks like he's going to win no problem whatsoever. The early stages of the melee were chaotic and frenzied, This uh, and has left 
and is left fields trampled and villages half torn down. Many have been forced to leave the battle either by injury or defeat. Okay, so we can watch uh, each fight, or we'd say it's too exciting. Oh, we've got Lord Paramount Edward Stark in this one. Okay, and our wife. All right, that's um, an interesting one. Hey, this is too exciting. I just want to see the final results. We have a new sworn shield. We have a new sworn shield option. Gar. Okay. Fair enough. Lord Paramount Eddard Stark and Sir Wyman Stout sighted each other, engaged in combat. For a fierce duel, Lord Paramount Eddard prevailed, forcing Sir Wyman to yield. Oh, all right. So 105 against 80. So this is much better fight. This is much better quality melee than the one we were involved in. After many hours of battle, only Lord Paramount Eddard Stark and Lord Gregor Forrester remained in the field. They engaged in the final duel, which Lord Paramount Eddard won after forcing Lord Gregor to yield. This leaves Lord Paramount Eddard to be proclaimed the winner of the melee. Oh, very well done, very well done. Uh, yeah, fantastic. And then we have Gregor the Good, who is not is not quite as good with his gonorrhea, but... He's still relatively all right. Yeah, that was a high quality melee. All right, well, a worthy winner. A son was born to Master Jory of King's Course and Mistress Daisy of King's Course named Bernard. Nah, I don't like that one. Give me a new name. Callan. Yes, we'll call him Callan. Callan, what are we gonna do? You know what? You're gonna have a humility one. You're gonna be the second uh, child. You can learn some humility. Learn to be content with your way in life. As many hours of intense battle, the melee is finally over. The final group pro provided a spectacle for all those present. Doubtless, songs will be made about the Great King's Course melee of 8292. Everyone likes that we held the melee, and Lord Paramount Eddard gets some prestige for it. Alright, good. We're garnering some goodwill. Another melee in Torrin Squares. This one is uh, Master Hellman's uh, melee. Well, of course I'll go and prove my strength. Yeah. Uh, so it was wild and frenzied, but we managed to get through the first part of it. And now we have the first person we saw was our wife. Oh, wow. Is she better than us at this? Uh, much. She is a much better fighter than we are. Well, let's duel her. Um, okay, let's see what we want to do here. We could just try going for force. We try being defensive. Let's try being defensive. Let's see how that goes. Oh, wow. We were overwhelmed by Mistress Stacy's immense strength as she strikes us with a bloody charge. Sent reeling, and it gives her an opening. She overcomes our defense a mighty blow and sent us sprawling into the ground. We look up at her towering above us, ready to deliver the finishing blow. Well, you know what? I'm not finished yet. We're not losing to our wife. Mistress Daisy strikes, but you roll to dodge just in time, taking no more than a flesh wound. You force yourself back to your feet and hold your weapon uh, ready. 0% chance of becoming one-eyed? Alright. Did we become wounded? No? Okay. Well, we tried defensive, but we need to try might this time. We're going to go all in. As you and Mistress Daisy engage, you slip up and leave an opening in defense. Mistress Daisy strikes to try and take advantage. She overwhelms our defense with mighty blow sent us sprawling to the ground. We look up at her towering above us, ready to deliver the finishing blow. Yield! Yield! Daisy lowers the point of her weapon and extends a hand. I accept, she says. Back on your feet. Your battle fairly won. Well, Mistress Daisy is victorious. Oh, that one stings. Daisy Mormont uh, engaged us in a fierce duel, but we were forced to yield, removed ourselves from the field, nursing our injuries, and we were eliminated. Oh! Roland de Gore and Howland Bowles sighted each other, engaged in combat. The duel was fierce, perhaps too fierce, as Howland accidentally died at Roiland's hands. His lifeless body is removed from the field whilst Roiland seeks a new opponent. Oh, wow. So Howland Bowl dead. Very much dead. By Roland de Gore. Okay, well, we'll stop keeping track of him then. So that now means that Barth Bowl is the only brother left, although apart from the one who actually owns King's Grove, Lord Porther. Fought bravely. 
John and Sir Roderick Cassell sight each other engaged in combat. After a fierce duel, John prevailed, forcing Sir Roderick to yield. So our uncle is also out of the uh, tourney. Why does he not like us? Oh, because he's a claim and he's ambitious. Alright, so you might want to get our titles at some point. Well, he fought bravely. After many hours of intense battle, only Sir Malcolm Branfield and John remained on, in the field. They engaged in a, fine du in a final duel, which, which Sir Malcolm won after forcing John to yield. This leaves Sir Malcolm to be proclaimed the winner of the tournament. Sir Malcolm Branfield. Alright, so again, a lower quality tournament, but that's why we're getting invited. He is a true warrior. Right. And his melee is finally over. What a great fight. Okay, well, I am going to end the episode here. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.